This is a podcast on working time value of money problems. We're going to look at many different types of problems to help you work through using your calculator. The first problem is an easy problem. It's just a monthly mortgage payment. I want you to be able to be able to calculate a monthly payment knowing the amount of your mortgage and your annual rate. And of course, how long are you, you're going to be paying the mortgage for. So, everyone get their calculators on, put your calculator on, and we're ready. You have a monthly mortgage amount of 250000 Even though I show which keys go with to which number, remember, enter the number first, then hit the key. So we have a $250,000 mortgage we're looking at. Realize that's the mortgage amount today, that's your present value. You're going to pay the mortgage off, so in the future, you have nothing left. Realize you're paying it for 15 years. So to enter your period of time, it is 15 years, but we're making a monthly payment, so times 12, this is how many payments you're going to have. That is your N, or N period. Your rate is 16%, 6%, excuse me, annually. So 6 divided by 12 is a 0.5 monthly interest amount. That's your interest per year. Hit your payment key. And that is your payment amount on this mortgage. Next, to figure out how much money you will have using different periods of time in a savings account. So, we're compounding quarterly, but have monthly payments. So, how much will you accumulate in your account? Again, I'm going to go ahead and clear this, but remember that doesn't clear your calculator. But the way I clear my calculator, you hit your orange key, and then you see clear key that will clear all. So I'm going to put aside $2,000. So I'm going to put $2,000, but since I'm putting that money aside, I'm going to use my plus minus key here on my calculator to make it a negative number. That's what I'm putting aside today. I'm not making any payments, and my period of time is 24 months. But I want to go quarterly because I'm compounding quarterly. There are three months and a quarter, so I take that monthly amount, divide by three. So I have eight quarters I'm accumulating savings over. That's my N. My quarterly compounding rate is 12% divided by four, or three. That's my interest. And the amount I will have in 24 months is 2,533.54. Next problem. This is an annuity due. Annuity dues are looking at payments at the beginning of a period. You have regular annuities, end of period, annuity due, beginning of period. They call it annuity due because it used to be on a calculator. The beginning key was called your due key. So what when you ever see a problem with beginning in the name, you want to put turn on your begin key. So hit your orange key, hit your MAR key. Notice begin comes on the top of your calculator. Make sure that is on to go ahead and work this problem. So, what we have, we turn on our begin key, we have a $500 monthly payment, that's my payment amount. Nothing else comes in the future, zero future value. My interest per year, so I want my monthly interest amount, right, is nine divided by 12. That's my interest monthly on this annuity. My period of time is 10 years, but how many months? 120 months, that's my period. And what will I have to pay for this annuity? That annuity will be, um, charge me $39,766.88, right? That's the cost of that annuity earning 9%. So I can get $500 every month for 10 years, having bought this annuity for $39,000, about $800. Next problem, differential cash flows. Now, if you have a different calculator, this will work very differently. Most importantly is to clear your calculator before you work a differential cash flow problem. I sometimes clear it a couple of times. Orange, C, right? That will clear out any cash flows you already have in there. Now, notice I want the value in 2008, but my first payment's not to 2010. So I have a couple of zero payments. So how I work this problem is I hit my zero, and notice the CFJ key here. 
oops, I made a mistake. I didn't turn off my begin key. So first of all, turn off my begin key. Notice, begin has disappeared. Now we're ready to work this problem. So again, zero, hit my CFJ key, that's my initial cash flow. Hit it again, that's my first cash flow. 500, that's my next cash flow. 1500, my next cash flow. 750, hit the cash flow B key again. And 2200, hit my cash flow key one more time. My discount rate is 6%. So I need to enter that, 6, hit my IYR key. Now to ca calculate the value of those cash flows today, I'm going to use my net present value. The same as your PRC key, but I need to hit my orange key first, my PRC key, and that's the value today of those cash flows. Another problem, clear your calculator. We're going to look at how do we calculate the value of the bond today? What should we bond price. Now realize, as interest rates go up, bond prices go down. As interest rates go down, bond prices go up. This is the reason, the reason for this is bonds need to yield what the market rate is. Since the coupon rate never changes, the price of the bond will change. So we're looking at the price of this bond. It is an 8% semi-annual coupon, maturing in 10 years, Base value is usually $1,000, but market rates have come down to 6%. So, what will be the price of the bond? Now, your check is, I know the price has to be greater than 1000 because interest rates have gone down. My price should be going up. So, notice, for this bond problem, my face value is also my future value. That's what I'm going to be paid back at the end of this bond. So, I have a $1,000 future value. I have semi-annual payments for 10 years. So I have 10 years times two payments a year. I have 20 semi-annual payments. This is my N. My payment amount is my $1,000 times my coupon rate of 8%, which is $80. But I'm going to get this $80 twice a year, so I've got to divide by two. My semi-annual payment is $40, and that's my payment amount. My market rate is 6%, but I want to know my semi-annual rate, rate divide by 2, 3%. That is my interest. What's the price of my bond? What should, should it cost me? My check, it is greater than $1,000, $1,148. What about pricing of a stock? Now, you will be pricing stocks using the Gordon pricing model or dividend expected dividend model or the dividend growth model. This is when you know that this payment, you're looking at a specific time period. There's a specific time period you're going to use time value money. So notice in the problem, it says this is a three-year stock you're buying. You know you're going to sell at the end of three years. When I see a definite time period, use time value of money. Again, clear your calculator. Notice this stock is paying differential dividends. So guess what? I can't use my payment key. I've got to use my CFJ key. So how are we going to know what the price of the stock should be today? If I know, let's say I have an option, I can sell it in three years for $60, right? This is stock options. I know that's what this value in three years is going to be. And these will be my dividend payments. And I know my required return is 14%. So first of all, I've cleared my calculator. I'm doing it again just in case. I have no initial cash flow, so it's zero first of all. Then I get a $2.50 dividend, a $4.50 dividend, oops, $4.50 dividend, there we go. I get a $5.50 dividend plus my $60, so it's $65.50 is my final payment. $14 is my interest rate. So what's the price of the stock? I'm going to pay $49.87 for this stock. Well, I hope this helped you working all your time value of money problems. If you have any additional questions, please look at the discussion board and post a question in the discussion board. Good luck with your projects and good luck on your test.